connection, and you're probably doing it when it's first been hooked up, the thing is you'll either have your pit underground here, so we've got our underground pit here, we've got our meter box, all right? The four mil coming out of here is the minimum of size that we need to go to the meter. You've got to remember a kilowatt hour meter is measuring the current going through into the installation. The four mil neutral is only to give it our voltage across the voltage part. Remember, so we've got volts and amps. A kilowatt hour meter is made up of both of them. All right, so we have the voltage across the supply, all right, and then we have the current going through the active. All right, the neutral comes from here goes to our neutral joining point in the bottom of the what they call the link bar. Okay. Here we have a service fuse which is mostly mounted inside the board. Very rarely you'll get a serve anything like where it comes from a pit, there will be no service fuse or anything inside a pit. It'll be hard join join. So in other words, from here to the top of the service fuse, you've got a hard active. There's no way of isolating it. Okay? The only other difference if you're having the beta bottom of your meter panel, so for example, if we have a look over here just for a second Hambo. You will have your three service fuses, your neutral link, your meter will come out of here, one active out of here, another one out of here, the neutral will come out of here. Why have we got this? This is for our cable tie to cable tie meters, but you can see that the three service fuses are still down the bottom. Alright? Look up top here, we put our circuit breakers, we have our main earth, and that's the same as what we've got up there. We have the link, the MEN link, and then we have Protected, oh sorry, unprotected, protected, and the other ones as we go through. So, this installation that we're looking at here is very much the same. We have our main earth bar, we have our, what type of one? Unprotected, alright. Then we have our protected neutral bar with the RCD, and the same over here, alright. This is our stove that we need to disconnect, that comes from down here with our isolator, and we have our ME endpoint. So, the first test we're going to conduct is we're going to make sure that the earth from here, from the earth bar to the earth stake is continuous. All right. And the first thing I'm going to do is set up my meter. First thing I need to do is we make sure what are we going to do? Check for battery. The batteries are working. Okay. So we check that we've got really good full power up here. If it's sitting right down towards the end of the B for batteries, I would probably be, um, in other words, replace the batteries. All right, you nearly you want a good strong output from it. The other thing we have is we have the blue scale. You notice we've got two blue scales. We've got zero to three and zero to five hundred ohms. So if it goes above the three, if it goes back and deflects straight up above the three, we need to then take it up to five hundred. All right, it could be something like five or six ohms. The next one on the top is so we'll do that. I'll zero that. All right, that's zeroed. Okay, no worries. All right. Yep, beautiful. Then I'll take it to 500 on a red, and we have a zero there perfectly. The other thing about zeroing it is to make sure what? The leads, the leads are good. All right? We don't want faulty leads, things like joints and stuff like that, giving us faulty readings and stuff like that. So in our approving meter is working okay. What we'll do is we'll go from, now if you look at this first test here, it's called sequence of tests. It's in our wiring rule book and it says earth resistance continuity of the main earthing conductor. Once we've done that, we then move on to the earthing conductor of the exponential bonding parts. All right, and then we do the full insulation test. It's actually a sequence of events going along. And then if we need to look at each individual test, you can come down and have a look and see what the results are. All right, if you follow that sequence through, and then it'll go, if you have any problems, you can go to these ones and then work your way down. And the idea is just breaking down all the tests through the whole circuit. I will also do on here to show you some short circuits, sorry, shorter shortcuts on testing if you do have some faults, all right? And I'll show you where you can do a shorter test on this. So the first thing I need to do, right, is we don't need to remove our MEN. We've got it set to three, uh, three ohms. What's the maximum reading I should be getting on my main earth? Sorry? 0 0.5. 0 0.5, correct. There's no more than 0.5 of an ohm. So I put my tester onto my earth bar. Do not put it onto the earth clamp here, all right? Because we are not making sure there's no high resistance. We need to put it onto the earth stake, all right? And the reason I need to do that is sometimes you could have a high resistance under here. I have seen where they put sticky tape underneath and you think, oh yeah, it's okay. And they actually, when you touch the bar here, you've got a different reading again. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So you need to make sure that you're touching the bar, that we don't have a high resistance on the clamp. 
So at the moment, I'm reading zero on that. We're all good with that one, no problems. I'll then do the next one, which is our exponential bonding conductor. And we're reading zero on that, no problems at all. So the next thing I've got to do is make sure that all the earthing points and all my appliances and all these other points that I have, that the earth is continuous from here to the stove. You understand what I'm getting at? So I'm gonna hold that on there. I've got zero. All right, I'll do the other one over here. So all my earth, what's this proving if I go back to zero? That it's continuous. In other words, if, if I have a fault, I know that the fault current, and in the back of the baton holder, if you have a look, there's a little tiny brass tag behind the two pins. You put that in, and that'll read zero as well. All right, don't test the two pins. The pins are for active and neutral on the thing, they're spring-loaded. There's actually a, a clamp, in the, a pin point in the back. All right, I don't need to test the, the, um, the fan here, which where you look at it as an appliance. That's not gonna be part of it, that's not hardwired into the circuit. All right, I've checked all my stuff. I'm happy with that, my earths are all continuous. So basically I'm up, I've done these two tests, we've satisfied the results. The third one now is insulation resistance test of the whole installation. So I need one more clamp behind you there, Mr. McAllister, that's all right. So in this one, we're gonna clamp the active and neutrals together. All right, thank you very much guys, thank you. So the next thing we need to do, we've clamped the active and neutral together. You can, on most some tests, some people say test these individually, sorry, test them together to test the whole installation. Some people sometimes want to test them individually. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Because if you get a fault on it, but I say test the whole installation, if you get a fault on it, then we start breaking it apart and then we work from there. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So why do I need to put a clamp across here? Because the thing is, if I'm testing from here on this active, it gets to here, I'm not going to be testing the rest of the installation. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So I need to make sure that when I'm testing through here, the active is continuous. I don't need to do it to the neutral because the neutral is joined through the MEN, sorry, through the bar link here. All right? So I make sure, now the next thing I need to do, make sure we disconnect our MEN link. This is just a, a plug. Normally you would undo the screw and you would take it out and disconnect the MEN link altogether. Does that make sense? Yep. All right? Why am I disconnecting the MEN link for? Fault. Sorry? Otherwise you'll get a fault. Well, in other words, we don't want to make, because we put the MEN link in to have the earth and neutral tied at the same potential, because the fault current will go via the MEN link back via the neutral. Do you understand what I'm getting at? We're just making sure that we haven't got any short circuits down between earth and our active conductors. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So the other thing I've got to do, make sure all switches are in the on position. There's no use having the main switch turned off and I'm going to test the whole installation, is it? So all my circuits are on, make sure all my light switches are turned on, stoves turned on, and power points. All right, some people say, why do we have to have the power points on? I mean, the rules basically said all switches have to be in the on position, all right, even light switches. Because even when you test a light switch, you need to make sure that the, the um, twin active going up to the light is um, still getting tested under the installation rules. The minimum resistance reading I should have on this is one mega ohm. Well, if the answer is there, buddy. Okay. So one mega ohm. It's on. Basically, one mega ohm applies even to appliances and anything like that. Is a minimum um, reading you can have. The only one you might get a low reading on is if, when you're testing the whole installation, right? And you could get a faulty reading on is on a hot water service or a stove. Okay. Because if they're turned on, normally a hot water service is turned off, but if, if it's in part of the circuit and you don't have the isolator turned on, you could get a faulty reading down to earth. And it would go that if you did the individual tests, um, because sometimes a faulty hot water element can be down on, re on the reading, and that can be down to as much as 10,000 ohms. So if you do get a low reading, look at it, what circuit it's on. If it's on the hot water service or on the stove, you isolate it and then start having a look at that. The wiring rule book here, and like I said to you, it says it can get down to heat, 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 heating sheath elements down to 0 0.01 of a sheath um, ohm. So that, and also, if you have a look at that on the here, and this is what I've talked about to my guys, that's not this 0.1 sitting over here, right? It's this 0 0.01 sitting just above the zero. So it, it's not much to say if it's stuffed or not. Okay, so if you find you get a very low reading, you might be better to go to a um, 
you know, in other words, if it's right down that value, you might be better to replace it. Anyway, the minimum reading, one mega ohm on most stuff, all right, well, not most, all stuff, even appliances. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test from earth, all right, to my active conductors. I'm gonna select it onto 500 volts. I don't need to go to 1,000 volts. The way the kind of thumb of rule stuff is, if it's 250, you do 500 volts. If it's a three phase, 400 volts, you do 1,000 volts. Do you understand what I'm getting at? It's double the voltage pressure. We're only putting DC into it, so we only have to put double the voltage in, okay? So, I'm gonna to go to 500 volts. We're gonna test between active and earth. And I get, on this one, because we've got inbuilt faults, we're down to 0 0.2 of, 0.2.3 of an ohm. Oh, 0.3 of a meg, sorry. So the problem is it's failed, the, the whole installation's failed. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna separate and start working my way back to separate ones. So now what I wanna do is test the active and neutral to see if there's a difference between the two of them. So what I'll do is, we'll go between earth and the neutral. Now I've got one meg, just above one meg. But if I go to the 0 0.2, we're down to 0 0.3 like we did before. So I can eliminate the neutral now that the fault is on the neutral circuit. It's on the active circuit. Now, I can go through and test all the individual circuits and that's one way you can do it. Another shortcut you can do, and this is what I was showing the other guys before, is if I hold that onto the earth conductor, all right? And then what I do is we start looking along on the different circuit breakers. So we've got our fuses in here. So the active conductor on this side, I test. Can you hold that for us, Will, onto there, please? Just hold that there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start going along. So if I turn this off, right, that's going up to a higher value. If I come back down, I'm just gonna go into the other one. And that's come down, if I turn that off, it's coming back up. If I come into the other one, over here on the active, see how it's gone up high? So that's come back down, so we've got a problem here in power. And it's not moving much at all. But when I come back up to this one, turn it off, it goes right up. Same with this one. So what I'm doing is going along and seeing what changes are made in the circuit. So what I'm trying to say is, if you have a long and you have it on the active conductor and you start turning circuits on and off, I can even do it on the main switch down to here. And what I'm getting at is, I'm turning it off that the, the fault will come back up. So that's come back up again. That one hasn't. That one hasn't, that one hasn't. So me turning this lighting circuit off has mean I've isolated the fault down the line. Do you understand what I'm getting at? It means I've automatically shortened the search down to my lighting circuit. Does that make sense? Mm. So now from the lighting circuit perspective downwards, I would have to start looking at um, what light fittings are on the on there that I could have a short on. Do you understand what I'm getting at? It could be down to earth or something where I've got a low reading. So that's where at least it's isolated it down on the circuit and I can go from there. So some of the other tests we're gonna do now, polarity of the mains. So polarity of the mains is to make sure that we've got the active and the neutral are on the correct value. So the first test I can do is I go to ohms. We come from here to the neutral conductor and we come to the neutral bar. And my idea of that is I'm reading zero. What's that telling me? That the active, the neutral is continuous all the way through. The next one, I've got to make sure I've still got my link on because if I don't, we're not going to test from that point. Now, the other thing is I could, if I wanted to, to make sure it's continuous, but it's not going to work. I need to make sure it's going from the pit. Some people come here and they test from here back to the main switch and then from here down that way. But that's not doing anything. Do you understand what I'm getting at? It's not showing it's continuous. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So you need to make sure it's continuous. So what we'll do is we'll put our link back on. I'll test from the top of the main switch to the active here. And we get zero. So now that proves to me, right, polarity testing is necessary to ensure that the shock hazard. So I'm making sure that the active is in the active position and the neutral is not being transposed, all right? Quite a lot, what, quite a bad thing in the pit is that they start off here. What, what's the problem you have with a lot of cables that you get in, in pits and stuff like that? 
get a lot of water. They use black XOPD. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I've seen them where they've been heat shrunk, that especially the blue phase and the neutral, they've been done wrong, right? So you've got to prove from the pit to the top of the main switch that you've got all your active conductors and your neutral to your neutral. Do you understand what I'm getting at? All right, it's been a serious thing. Happened in Oakley, probably six months ago. They went to put the power on and they livened up the earth because it was on the blue phase became the active. All right, um, because it was they thought it was a neutral and it livened up and burnt all the earth in the whole installation. All right, the, now the joint has to be had, had to be rewired right through. Very simple mistake. Things happen. All right. So we've got polarity. What's the next one? Um, other tests we're going to do. I'll, I'll come back to in a minute. We're going to test the fault loop. So some of the other ones we're going to do is when you're testing active to uh, we call them fault loop impedance tests. And the fault loop impedance test, all right, so we've carried out correct circuit connections and that, verifying the active conductor. So the fault loop impedance test, what's that about? All right, all the fault loop impedance is about everything from here up back in the loop that we call the fault loop impedance. So from the top of the main, from the neutral bar, going back to the center point, back to the top of the main switch, we've got large cables. We don't have to worry about the cable or the resistance being very small. What they're worried about, that if I have a, a, a fault on a fault on a short on the circuit on a, any any of these appliances, that the resistance of the earth and the active is enough, are large enough to allow the fault current to ha happen very quickly. Do you understand what I'm getting at? So table 8.1 and 8.2 in our rule book. So this is 8.2, and what we have is we have resistance of the active and resistance of the earth. So the resistance of the active, and both of those are usually the same size conductor. They're, uh, say, for example, a power circuit that will be 2.5 and 2.5 active. We have to make sure that those wires from the length of where they're going. So in a house, it's pretty hard because it's a very short run along those power points. But start thinking about a factory where you've got a 30 or 40 meter run, the fault loop impedance can be very high. Okay? It's even not strange to run an exit sign. You might run an exit sign all the way down to the back. So the main thing we're going to do is we're going to test for example, from here to the earth, I'm going to test to make sure my resistance of my earth. I'll come down, I'll take a reading, all right? Um, and if I've, got, if I've got 0.6 ohms or 0.34, what I will do is come back, I'll have a look here. And if you look down, so for example, I've got a type C circuit breaker here, 20 amp. I'd come back here, I'd look at 2.5 active in earth, 20 amp circuit breaker, come along to a type C, 0.98 is my maximum. So the active conductor can have 0.49 and so can the earth. And that's what I'd also check from the top of my circuit breaker to my active conductor, take base me measurements and make sure that they do not exceed the 0.98 value. Does everybody understand what I'm talking with that? All right, good. The next one is to make sure all switches are working in the active position. So the way I do that, I need to make sure first, come along and make sure which one is my active conductor, so I've got it on zero. I find out, now what I need to do is make sure we don't get a feedback. So I'm gonna turn on the first one which I take as power, and my active conductor, that's reading zero. I'm just making sure I'm getting nothing on that one. So that then tells me zero. And my idea is that if I turn that switch on and off, the meter switches over as well, and that's telling me that I am switching that in the active position. Does that make sense? All right. If I wasn't switching it and I pushed it into the neutral button and it worked then, right? Well, it shouldn't work, right? But I just want to make sure that I'm switching the active conductor. All right. The other thing I can do with that test, the only thing I'd have to do is disconnect the neutral zone, is make sure that my neutral is continuous as well. The only problem is I can get a feedback because I've got all the other neutrals in there as well. All right. So we've done all the active conductors. I can go through and do those other tests. Insulation of appliance testing, making sure the insulation on the earth is okay. All right. When we do tests on these, what have I got to make sure first? What's the first thing I'll be checking if this is an appliance? I've got a metal frame. Continuity. Sorry? Earth continuity. Earth continuity, exactly. I want to make sure that if I get a fault on this steel frame, that the earth on this pin is going to work. So I do that here, and I've got an open circuit. Oh, hang on a sec. Am I getting anything? Yep, now I've got something. And you've got to scratch the steel a bit sometimes because you sometimes you get a little bit of shit on there. Yep, we're reading zero. That's okay. What's the next thing I need to do now? 
if this was an appliance and I wanted to check the frame. What I, when, when you get these bathroom fans and they're all plastic and they've only got two pins, there's nothing to check to earth because they're double insulated. They're classed as fully enclosed, class two, means it's like a power tool, there's nothing to check on earth, all right? Here we do have a metal frame, it could be something like a mix master or a washing machine or something like that. So what I want to do is I want to set this to 500 ohms and make sure between the earth pin and the active and neutral that I don't have any shorts. So, but also make sure all your switches are in the on position too. Okay, there's no use, it's like an oven, there's no use having an oven and all the switches are turned off. You want to make sure the elements are all turned on so that in case when they do come down, they could have a short on the element. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I could test it with all the elements off and then suddenly, yeah, oh, it reads okay. The person comes along and turns the element on and that's when it develops the fold. Does that make sense? So with appliance testing, always make sure that you've got the switches turned on. So I've got, I've got a, a large reading on that, just double checking. And I'll go with the other one as well. Yep. Yep, I've got infinity. Minimum reading for these, the same thing, one mega ohm. Okay? We're all happy, happy with that. Fan socket outlet as well, they class as light, they can be coming off a lighting circuit, so you need to make sure. Um, all lighting sockets, if you have and can't get access to the frame, always test the frame with the light fitting. Okay? Sometimes you get a lot of light fittings and all that, people go and test the uh, connector, but they actually don't test the frame of the light fitting itself. Do you understand what? So if you don't test that, yeah, you might have an earth point there, but the wire isn't joined in onto the frame itself. Every lighting point does have an earth point, but they don't check the frame of the earth. All right, uh, I'll leave it at that now and we'll um, go from there.